Well, praise the Lord, it's good to be back with you tonight. Uh, I tell you, it's been uh, quite a bit of a hectic week. Uh, Friday, um, Southern County came out on the uh, website and gave a list of upcoming businesses to start, and churches were listed in that. And uh, So we decided that we were going to uh, try to start back up this next week, and we're still going to do that. Uh, but then the governor came out and put out executive order 30 and so there was some question there and some of the businesses they said they were going to start they're not going to start now then today's conference said they're going to start them next week so quite a bit of confusion going but we're going to operate and we're going to operate very safely uh, we'll be setting about 10 per pew I have talked to per section of pews I have talked to almost everybody. There's a few people left for me to call. Right now, it's about 40 people per service. So that would be about 10 per pew section. Uh, and sitting every other pew, wearing a mask, and uh, doing all those things. It'll be good to get back in the house of the Lord. Uh, the way I kind of see it, if they can open up hair salons and things like that next week, uh, where you're touching, surely we can operate over six feet apart and uh, safely with a mask. So uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing those of you that'll be able to come out and be with us on Sunday. As we know there's some people, understandably, who have uh, risk factors and, and they're breathing and things to that nature. Uh, maybe their immune system, they, they need to stay in a little longer. So uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing everybody. On Saturday, you will receive one call with what service that you signed up for, and there'll be a Pacific one call for you saying you're signed up for the 10 o'clock service or the 12 o'clock service, and just as a little bit of a reminder, if I have gotten something wrong, which you know is quite possible, uh, please uh, call me and let me know. I want you to look with me to Revelation 5. As I sit down today and begin to think about uh, uh, something uh, this came to mind and it message we preached about three years ago maybe even had mentioned a few times but here we see John the Revelator and in St. John chapter 5 and verses 1 and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed, prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, and when he had taken the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred 
and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign upon the earth. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we ask you today, Father, bless this old unworthy servant. Lord, that we might do thy work and will. And Father God, we ask you right now, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Meet every need here today. In Jesus' name we pray. There's a few things that I want you to notice tonight out of the scripture. God was there in verses number one. He was sitting on the throne. And in verses seven, we see Jesus taking the book out of God's right hand. Always like that, that, that piece of scripture, amen. Those that say they are one, we know that they are two. They're one mind and one accord, but glory to God, they are two separate individuals. And brother, we see the strong angel in verses two proclaiming who is worthy to open the book and to loosen the seals thereof in verses two. And we, the third thing I want you to see is they couldn't find anyone worthy to open the book and to solve the problem that they had because there was no one open. There was no one that they could find that was willing, that could open the book. And look what it says in verses three. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And verses four Right here, John was weeping because of the problem. John was weeping because no one was worthy to open the book. And the fifth thing I want you to see is that even though John knew Jesus, he knew him, he was one of his disciples, he couldn't see him in the midst of all that was going on. And in the midst of the beast and the elders around the throne, mist means in the middle, among, before them, between them. And all that was going along around the throne, the singing, all the things, the beast that was there, all the things that were happening in the middle of them, among them, before them and between them, John could not see Jesus. And he wept because no one was there to open the book. And it took one of the elders. The next thing I want you to see is one of the elders had to point out to Jesus. He had to point out to John, there's Jesus. There he is. There's the one that's worthy to open the book. Now the last thing I want you to see is then there is no doubt that John was happy. Because the problem was solved. Now the problem was already really solved. Jesus was there. He just didn't know he was there. He just couldn't see he was there. He didn't see him in the midst of all that was going on, all that was happening. Now, now we know that then John, no doubt, was happy because the problem was solved. And when he saw Jesus, no doubt he went and began to sing with those others in verses 9. So John went from being tore all to pieces. Now Jesus was there. Jesus was there. He just couldn't see him, and that's the reason he was crying. That was the reason he was weeping. But when the elder pointed him out, glory to God, no doubt he went over and began to sing the song of the redeemed. And there's a few things I want you to more to see. Every one of us here today will be worshiping with him in that song one day. Why? Because it's the song of the redeemed. Those that have redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. I'm, I'm looking forward to singing that song with them one day. But I say unto you, we need to be worshiping God like this every day. And one of the reasons we don't is we are a lot like John. 
One of the reasons that we don't is we're a lot like John. John, even though Jesus was there, he couldn't see him in the mist. And because he couldn't see him in the mist, he was troubled. As soon as he saw that Jesus was there, he knew Jesus was going to take care of the problem. But because he couldn't see him there, he was all troubled inside. We know that God's on the throne. How many of us know that? I know that, that my God, the great I am, he's on the throne. We know Jesus and that he, wa that he won the victory on the cross for us and all mankind. And just like John, sometimes we can't see Jesus, the solution to our problems. We can't see Jesus in the midst of all that's happening, all that's going on, all that is all around us, but we know that he is there. You see, my friends, today, I, I believe the Bible tells us in Matthew 18 and 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst, there am I in the middle. There's nobody here today but me and Vanessa, but glory to God, that means Jesus is in the middle. Amen. It's in the middle of every individual because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Church, I'm here to tell you he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Jesus is in the midst. Sometimes you can't see him in all that's going on. Sometimes you can't see him in the trial, the tribulation, the confusion, all that's happening about. But glory to God, I thank God he's there. He's there to be my very present help. He's there when I can't see him and when I can see him. I just got to look for him. I got to look for him in the midst. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. The mist means anything that blurs also or makes it hard to see or understand something or a haze. You know, as we look around in the midst of this virus, and I don't say the name of it because Vanessa says I can't say it right, and that's okay. But glory to God, as we look around, it seems like everything's all blurred. One minute, amen, uh, things is looking better, and the next minute it's looking that way, and glory to God, but I know one thing for sure. It may be hard to see it, but Jesus is in the midst. He's with us. He's there to help us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. We've just got to look for him. I like what it says in Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, and a very present help in a time of trouble. Very present help in trouble, I mean. You and I today, we're so guilty of knowing that God's on the throne. We're so guilty of knowing, amen, that, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We're so guilty of knowing, amen, these things. But glory to God, when trouble's around, we're so guilty of being like John. We're so guilty of getting all tore up and all the pieces when God's right there. He's God. He's in control. Yes, we got to use our good common sense, but God's in control. And that's the thing we got to remember. He holds the whole world in his hands. So I'll leave you tonight with this, that he's in the midst. Where two or three are gathered together, he's there. He's there whether you can see him or whether you can't see him. Maybe I, we need to point him out a little, amen? Point out his goodness and his mercy and his kindness in these days. He's there whether you can feel him or not. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. And the word of God is truth. The Bible says in St. John 17 and 17, sanctify thyself with truth, thy word is truth. His truth in God is not a man that he should lie. God is there. We just need to look for him. Not get all excited. Let him lead us and guide us and direct us. Sometimes I feel so weak because I get all excited.
if I disremember that God is in the midst. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for thy goodness and mercy. Lord, ever remind us today, Lord, not to get all excited because you're in the midst. Lord, you're right there, even though sometimes we can't see you. Lord, remind us. God, Father, we're going to give you the praise. And Lord, we're going to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Waiting on that good day, Lord, that we get to sing that song of redemption in heaven above. Amen. Good night.